Well, the next uh, the next part would be we actually move into his dad singing the lay of Sir Sabian Trailyard, and so it's a couple great couple great things. He, well, he's, first off, he's like like most most of the great songs, Sir Sabian was written by Ilian and generally consider, considered to be his crowning work, which this song is the song that Kavoth sings to win his pipes at the Aeolian. It's a massively famous song. It is plays a big role in the books, comes up constantly. But this yeah. Ilian, he seems like, like a Brian Adams type, I think, don't you guys? Yes. <laughs> These romantic love songs. Brian yes. Adams. It's uh well it's definitely I mean the way they build it out it's it's interesting that it's so popular in ob- opposite of Tinker Tanner anybody can play that with anything this is extraordinarily difficult to play and every time it comes up that you talk to a musician about it a musician hears about it they're like oh shit you sure you want to try something that difficult like maybe you know maybe dial it back a little bit and try something that's easier but then also the way he explains it, it's hellishly complex. And my father was probably the only one in the troop who could do it justice, though he didn't particularly particularly show it. I knew it was taxing even for him. So even like the way it's always described, there's a there's a lot of mystique around it, or uh, there's a lot of gravity around it, and how difficult it is. But also that it is the best song written by the best songwriter in the history of this world. That's for sure. very meaningful, obviously. And the the lyrics is, everything I do, I do it for you. Uh, wait, that's the wrong one. Oh, that makes sense. Because cause he said, yes, I cried at the end of it. So, yeah. Yeah. That would be, probably is that song. Yes. Right? Yeah, it's 100%. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the song, uh, w- one thing, because, again... Uh, as a reminder, this is a we're redoing episode six. This is not the original episode six, so we're we're we've already recorded a bunch of episodes into the into the future. So for you guys, this is episode six, but we've we've long moved past it. But uh, we talk about the this song a number of times. One thing we haven't talked about is how much this song re- resembles the story of Lon Ray and Lyra. So the, the, the song, you know, first time you get it mentioned is here. It's the, very, this is the first time it's brought up. And then he talks about, Kavoth says that, uh, Savian was the greatest of the Amir. And he cried for Savian and Halloween for love lost and love found and lost again at cruel fate in man's folly. Which sounds very much like what happens with Lon Ray and Lyra. The love lost and love found and lost again. The, you know, the love lost, Lon Ray dies. She calls him back. It's found again. And then Lyra dies. It's lost again. And at Cruel Fate, which that would be Cruel Fate, and Man's Folly, Lon Ray, what he does is considered folly. And so it... It sounds very, very similar, and even like um, when Scarpy tells the story and in Tarbian, the first story when he tells about the Creation War and he talks about Lanre speaking to Celatos. He says at one point, Lanre asks him, "Was I accounted a good man?" And Celatos says you were considered, you know, uh, among the best. You were beyond reproach, which is something that they talk about. Uh, that's a saying that's attributed towards the Siri Day, which is a member of the Amir. And so when they're talking about Savi and the greatest of the Amir, and he's like, you were counted one of the great of, a, great of us. You were beyond reproach. It's very much a, a, a Siri Day, a mirror type of thing. And so the f- it fits very well. Like, I mean, it fits ex- exactly with that, that story. So what it, what it raises questions for me is that was Ilian, is he an original member of like the Ruach? Did he go back to that 
the original people, the original like Greek gods of the world, like uh, Celatos and Lanre and Lyra and Aleph and Telu. Like, did he go all the way back there where, you know, he's, uh, what's her, what's her face? Um, in the Fae. Florian. Florian. Florian does not know who Taberlin the Great is, but she knows who Ilian is. So it could be that the reason she knows Ilian is the fact is they're contemporaries. And so they were around at the same time. It also could be that she just loves music and poetry, and so she would be more likely to know someone like Ilian than Taberlin the Great. But the fact that this story so much, so clearly resembles the story of Lanre and Lyra, it makes me question whether Ilian dates all the way back to that time, and then he wrote a song about Lanre and Lyra, but he changed it. And he made it about the Amir. He made it like about humans. So he just kind of changed some of the details. Mm-hmm. But he told that same love story and the the tragedy. He told the same love tra- love story tragedy, but he just kind of twisted things. And it it's it makes me think that that Ilian probably is dates very far back. When you mentioned the lyrics, it made me think of Kavos story arc. Makes me think that's what's gonna happen. He's yeah, gonna ha- find love, lose it, lose it, find it again, lose it again, and then man's folly, Kavos folly, and then boom, here we are. Yeah, and Silence something that parts. I, th- something that I keep thinking about is it, throughout this story is that there's a, a rhyming to the history, like now, or that it's uh, cyclical, and and that you know maybe it didn't have to be that. Uh, Ilian changed the names. Maybe it was somebody else, and this story keeps playing out. Uh, with could be that as Lanre well. Yeah. With Kavoth. Yeah. yeah, it could be that as well. It could be Lanre and Lyra, and then Savian well, and Aluin, and then Kavoth and Denna. It could be that you know the same tragic story happening over and over again, and um, it could be that. I mean. I don't know. It, uh, it but could, it could also fact, be Ilian's song last because he changed the names while Arladin's song didn't get to get sung. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because he didn't change the names. Yeah. Which if that. if Ilian was a Ruach, you know, he'd probably be smart enough to, you know, pepper that story into the world. He made it a famous story, so he peppered yeah. the story of Lanre and Lyra into the world so everybody knows it. But he changed well, the and, details and, but, so that it's and, not uh, clear. It, it, you know, it, here's man. This is why he's such a great writer. So you could take it and you could say, okay, it's a it's just a cyclical thing, or it's just you know, there the story is about tragedy, and he just sprinkled in, you know, the same type of tragedies in multiple parts of the world, and so it just keeps same type of things keep happening, or it's just you know a natural thing that there's these kind of tragedies and love stories. Or it could be that Ilian was a Ruach. He had witnessed these things. He changed the story because he knew he wanted to get that information into the world, but he didn't want to get, you know, the uh, Chandri and killing everybody who hears the song. So he changed the details or the so that it would trying spread. To hide the, or the Amir trying and, to hide the message. Yeah, yeah and, and that would play into, like, the, the poems and the, the children's rhymes the and all those rhymes, kind of things yeah, where yeah. there's information embedded in these things that you wouldn't pick up. Uh, and so there, there's just, there's multiple ways you could read this and you could say it's part of that embedding things in into children's poems or songs or, or things like that. Or it is something that just keeps playing out over time, so he's not actually doing that. You can also say that part of the reason that Kavoth seems to have this magical ability when he plays music is the fact that uh, he's he's Rue, and Ilian dates back to the Rue act. And so not only does Kavoth have a lineage all the way back to Ajax, or, or possibly even Ajax and Lanre and Lyra, maybe also on his on his dad's side has lineage all the way back to uh, Ilian. So maybe he's a descendant of Ilian and Ajax, you know, so there's just, there's so many different ways you could look at these little P 
pieces and see how they would all they you could make a case for any of them and they would all fit none of them like contradict you know you know no, none of them are impossible they could all work perfectly in the story and make perfect sense and there's just no way to know and there's just so much of the books that give you just layers and layers and layers to kind of analyze and try to try to piece together and it, it gives you a lot of you know information that you can you can scrutinize and try to figure out 